Matthew chapter 6, verses 7 and 8, and then 17 and 18. Matthew 6, 7 to 8, 17 to 18. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the hidden do. For they think that they shall be heard, for they are much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. Verse 17. But when thou, but thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto the father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Amen. Amen. This morning I want to bring a word of remembrance, as it were, to us, even as we begin our 63 days prayer and fasting. So I'm preaching on what I titled, Prayer and Fasting, a Lethal Combination. Pastor David Young Cho, in his book, uh, says or said that when someone comes, a member of his church comes for counseling, that they do not counsel the person. What they do is that they ask the person to go on a three days prayer and fasting. And in that three days prayer and fasting, something happens that that problem that the person had come up with ultimately will disappear. But also, he says that if per adventure, after three days, the problem is still there. He says, take one week. After that, he says, go 40 days. You will keep praying and fasting because what? That is a lethal combination that any problem, any force cannot stop. Any, stop, any force cannot stop. You must understand that prayer and fasting is a necessity for every believer. Everyone that has been called of God, you must understand that you are required at some point to not just pray, but also to fast. The truth is that there are depths of spirituality you, you can never get into without prayer and fasting. There are depths of spirituality. Listen, when we pray, God can do anything. But you understand that the anything we are talking of there is because God does anything. So prayer ultimately makes God to do what? Anything. Anything. If you look at history, you will discover that great men of God that we have heard of in one, you know, at one point or the other are men given to prayer. Most of us might have heard of the man John Wesley, you know, the... the, the, the the founder of the Methodist Church. This man was, will pray and fast. And he says that each time he prays and fasts, he is not seeking God in vain because something ultimately happens. John Calvin is someone also that was given to fasting. He fasted and prayed so much that the whole city of Geneva, about the whole city, gave their life to Jesus Christ. We also know of Charles Finney, also a man called to prayer and fasting. I can go on and mention, and mention, but we know our own Daddy Gio. We know that he is a man giving what to fasting and prayer. And we know the miracles that God, by the grace of God, has done in the life of that man. There is nobody that wants to do great things for God, that will not fast and pray. Listen, there was a time they came to meet Jesus, and they asked him, I said, listen, Jesus, how come your own disciples do not fast and pray? <laughs> and Jesus answered them, and said, listen, that's in Mark, Mark chapter 2. Jesus answered them, Mark chapter 2, verses 18 to 20. He says, and the disciples of John and of the Pharisees used to fast. And they come and say unto him, Why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast, but your own disciples fast not? 
And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them. Other translations say the bridegroom amongst them. So Jesus was saying, I'm, I'm with them right now. Says they do not need what? To fast. But the days will come. And such are the days that we are in. When the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and they shall fast in those days. The text we looked at, you will see that there are three cardinal responsibilities of a believer. One, we'll see in verse 3. Verse 3 talks about, it says, when you do arms. When you do arms, in other words, every believer is expected to give. Whether it is in giving of offerings, whether it is in giving of tithes, whether it is in giving to the poor, whether it is in giving to your parents, whether, whatever, you ought what? To give. You listen, some of us here have parents that will never, never need our money. Never. So giving to them is not because they are in need. You will remember the story of Isaac and Jacob. What happened? He said, listen, go bring me what? Venison. So that what? I will bless you. There are reservoirs of blessing that you cannot tap just like that. He said, because he's my father. Mm -mm. There are things that you will drought as you begin to release certain things that God has blessed you with. That God has blessed you with. So, you will see that in that verse 3, once again, it talks about when you do arms. But also, you will see that in verse 7, it talks about when you pray. For every believer, you must understand that prayer is not an if. Prayer is not an emergency tool. Prayer is a dialogue between you and God. The dialogue between you and God. Every believer. So the second responsibility of every believer in that text we read is that every believer what must pray. But in verse 17, you also see that Jesus did not say if you fast. Jesus said when you fast. So every believer ought to fast. If you've been a Christian for some time and you've not fasted, then you've not used the reservoir of the unction of God upon your life that you ought to. You've not tapped into deeper waters. You are still living uh, on the shores and still seeing things, uh, you know, from a very little perspective, as it were. Every believer ought to fast. Listen. We can pray without fasting. But the truth is that when we fast, we must pray. We must pray. We must pray. We must pray. I want you to understand that as Christians, fasting is not an exhibition. We are starting 63 days prayer and fasting now. It's not something for you to go meet other denominations and say, don't you know we have, people just did seven days. We are doing 63. 63. Do you understand the combination? 21 in three places. Hey! And you start, that is not why we are fasting. It's not an exhibition. So avoid exhibition. Avoid exhibition. I know we can be on, a, uh, you know, on Instagram and saying day one, day two, day three. Not for people to know that you are fasting. Avoid exhibition, please. Also, in your mind, Avoid any form of uh, legalism. You know, sometimes we just, as humans, we believe that if we don't suffer, uh, it's not yet uh, the will of God. Or if we don't, you know. And, and I want to understand that God is not asking you to fast because he wants to afflict pain on you. Whether you fast or you don't fast, God will still do what he wants to do. So let your mind not be on, hey, I fasted. Then, I'm suffering now, I'm suffering now. God is seeing it, so God, no. no, please, please. It's much more than that. Much more than that. But you must understand that when we fast, certain things happen. Fasting ultimately reminds us of our humility. Fasting reminds us 
of our frailty as humans. Fasting puts us a place whereby we know that we are ultimately always dependent on God. It puts you in a place where you know that you are vulnerable and that you are helpless. And only God can help you when it comes true for you. You are dependent on God. Fasting ultimately also, you know, apart from humbling you, also shows you that you are human. It you know, shows you are human. You, know, you can't do everything. It shows you what? You are a human being. And ultimately, one of the things that fasting does also, which I'm going to try and talk about, you know, is the fact that fasting shows you that you have a desire. Listen, each time you fast, there must be something that you are up to. There must be something that is before you. One of the things you are fast, we are fasting for this 63 days is the fact that none of us has ever been in 2021 before. This is, this is the first time. So we need God's help. We need direction. So if you don't have any other thing to fast for, let's assume that you don't have any personal thing. Just say, Father, I need your help this year, 2021. And engage him. But even as we begin to fast, you discover that fasting is, is, has a lot to do about deferring or refusing to do certain things, what we refer to as delayed gratification. So there are things that you enjoy doing, like food. And you say, listen, I'm not going to do this. But much more than I'm not going to do this, you are doing certain things to God. So you are exempting yourself from certain things, and you are putting yourself to God. There must, those two arms must be there for it to be called fasting. Or else, you are just trying to watch your weight. Or else, uh, you are just, you're just, you're just, you're just trying to keep fit. There's nothing wrong in trying to keep fit. There's nothing wrong about it. But when we are talking of spiritual fasting, we are talking of putting ourselves away from food, from drinks, from pleasures, and putting our focus and attention on God. So I've said that it helps you answer deep desires in your heart. It helps you answer, you know, certain things. So if you are believing God for a miracle this year, it's a reason why you must fast. If you are believing God to touch your life this year, that is a reason why you must fast. If there's a dream inside of you that you know it's only God that can make possible, that is a reason why you must fast. If there is something that you need, maybe you, you're just tired of the level of spirituality that you have, you've been in and you are looking for a deeper encounter with God, that is a reason why you must fast. If you just want to hear God the more, you've heard of several ways God speaks and you've just, you just want to hear him, that's the reason why you must fast. If you believe that there are bondages, limitations, curses that are holding you down, what? That's the reason what? Why you must fast. I remember, you know, one of the, I think on Saturday, the open heavens, that a Jew gave uh, uh, a testimony of a woman that her stepmother gave her a piece of bread. Gave her a piece of bread and said, take this bread so that I can block your womb. And when the lady took the bread, she was wondering what kind of words are this, but, you know, she just, maybe, maybe she didn't. And she took the bread. And lo and behold, the womb was blocked, of course. So he said, several years after, he was going to have a crusade in that place. And the lady decided what? To pray and fast towards it, that this crusade, I must encounter God. And an encounter happened. In the middle of the night, said a man came and pulled a rope from her mouth. And when the man pulled the rope, was pulling the rope, at the end of the rope was that same bread that she ate several years ago. That same bread. If you are experiencing limitations or experiencing things that you feel that this must not happen, there's a pattern that needs to break. It's a reason why you must fast. How to give us certain benefits of fasting. I have a lot of them. I will try to run through as many as I can. 
One, fasting will strengthen your prayer life. Strengthen your prayer life. Because when you are fasting, one ingredient that can never be missing is prayer. So what? You are constantly praying. And that's why if you do not know how to speak in tongues, believe God as you are fasting. It is one of the tools that you need to help you consistently stay in a connected state. You must learn to pray. It strengthens your prayer. And that is because when you are fasting, you are focused. There are things that you are asking for and you are specifically targeted at those things. In the book of Ezra chapter, chapter you see that in Ezra chapter 8 and verse 21 to 23. And they are believing God for something. And they stayed on it, focused, and fasted. Number two. I've mentioned this earlier, but one of the things it also does, which is a benefit for you, because, listen, you don't know you are proud until you see certain things in your life. Okay? That's when you say, they don't know who I am. They don't know. So, one of the things you also understand is that fasting humbles you. It humbles you. It humbles you. It puts you in a state whereby even when they are fighting you, you don't even have energy to fight. Just, just look at them. <laughs> look at them. You think of yourself say, listen, I, just, I, I don't have strength for this. <laughs> you just avoid several things. Fasting what? Humbles you. Listen. There is a connection with eating and pride. There is, there is a subtle connection that the food you eat, I don't know if, if, it is a, if it's directly related, but there's a connection with building pride on or in a person's life. Let's look at Ezekiel chapter 16 and verse 49. In Ezekiel 16 and verse 49, if I ask you why did God destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, you will tell me it is because they have gay and lesbian people. Isn't that so? Yeah. That's what you will tell me. But in this verse of scripture, it shows us exactly one, the major reasons, okay, in addition to all those things, the major reason why God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. He says, look, this was the iniquity of your sister, what? Sodoma. She and her daughter had pride. Fullness of what? Food. An abundance of laziness. Does that look like the kind of... Does that... Can you, can you extrapolate that and put it in America? Abundance of food. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor, what? And the needy. And the needy. And the needy. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 11 to 14. It says, Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God. By not keeping his commandments, his judgments, and his statutes, which I command you today. Lest when you have eaten and are what? Full. And have built beautiful houses and dwell in them. And when your herds and your flocks multiply, and your silver and your gold are multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, when your heart is lifted, up, and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Nigeria. You didn't see that in your Bible. That is what that Bible was expressing. Brought you out. Now you've eaten and you are full. Your cheeks are bursting with oil. Oil. Nothing. There is a connection with food and pride. I pray that during these 63 days prayer and fasting, 
God will remove every element of pride in the name of the Lord Jesus. And listen, it's not one of battle. It's something that you must consistently keep in check. Because at some point, the devil comes. He knows. And they just try you. And you just wonder, why would they do that to me? Why? It's taking me for granted, isn't it? And then it starts, it goes on, goes on, goes on. Goes on. Let's just move on, please. Number three. Fasting holds back the judgment of God. It holds back the judgment of God. In Jonah chapter 3 and verse 5, the Bible says, So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed the fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. Verse 10 of that Jonah chapter 3, And God saw their works that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. Judgments that are due unto you. And I dare say, even physical judgments, if you have a court case, bring it before God. Say, God, I'm looking for your intervention. God, I'm holding on to you. This judgment, turn it around, oh God, for my good. Number four, fasting will stop and subdue enemies. Stop and subdue enemies. In the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 1 and verse 4, or 1 to 4, it says, And it came to pass after this also, that the children of Moab, the children of Ammon, with them other beside the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There come might what? A great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side, Syria, and beyond, and behold, they be in Hazazon Tamar, which is Engadi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. And what? Proclaimed a fast. Proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Verse 22 of that same second Chronicles 20. In verse 22, the Bible says, And when they began to sing, remember they fasted and sought the face of the Lord. The Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. And the fear of the Lord, 29, of, and the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they had heard that the Lord fought against the enemies of Israel. Through prayer and fasting, by the help of God, they were able to subdue their enemies. Enemies that are pursuing your destiny. As you pray and fast these 63 days, those enemies, you will see them no more. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Number five, fasting brings wisdom and guidance. As we are starting the year, we need God's direction. We need wisdom. We need God to guide us. Fasting brings wisdom and guidance. In the book of Acts chapter 13 and verse 2, the Bible says, As they ministered to the Lord, and what? Fasted. The Holy Ghost said, Separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed toward Cyprus. They were looking for direction. They were looking for what to do. And by prayer and fasting, God opened their eyes. God spoke and granted them direction. As you pray and fast this season, God will give you direction in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Number six. You must understand that prayer and fasting also 
ultimately shatter strongholds. There are people that are just saying, this problem has been with me for years. These issues have been with me for years. I've just, I've just, I've just been caged, as it were. I just see it occurring. I've been doing things. I've been praying. Uh, but, you know, people have laid hands on me. But this issue still lingers. Prayer and fasting destroy strongholds. In the book of Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 6, the Bible says, Is this not, or is not this the fast that I have chosen? To lose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and they that break every yoke, so once or when we pray, strongholds are broken. In the book of Matthew chapter 17 and verse 21, the Bible says, How be it this kind of problem? This kind. Go it not out, but by what? Prayer and fasting. So by prayer and fasting. Number seven. Prayer and fasting puts your body under. Psalm 109 verse 24 says, My knees are weak through fasting, and my flesh faileth of fatness. So you have, the Bible talks about physical exercise, what? Or body exercise, profited what? Little. So even when you fast, there are, there are some, you know, toxins that are detoxified from your system. You are healthier. Healthier. When you sleep, you no, you no longer snore. All those, all those things blocking your, your everything class, class. If you are here, you know, um, your woman and your husband is snoring. Recommend fasting for him. Recommend fasting. You are, and then you too, you sleep, you sleep well. Okay, you sleep well. Um, let me try and round up. Number eight, prayer and fasting opens channels to divine encounters. Channels to divine encounters. Channels to divine encounter, encounters. In the book of Acts chapter 10 and verse 30, the Bible says, And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour. I was fasting what? Until this hour. And at the ninth hour, I prayed in my house. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. 31. And said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thy arms are heard in, re in remembrance in the sight of God. There was a divine encounter that he received. What? As a result of the prayer and the fasting that he was engaging. I pray that God will reveal himself to us during this 63 days prayer and fasting. In the name of the Lord Jesus. As I round up, let me just give us some tips to fasting. One, be sure that your motivation is towards God. Let your fasting be unto God. Okay. Forget about we, we in, this, in this, our brand, uh, Redeem is doing 100 days. Redeem is doing, that is not why we are fasting. No. Just throw that away somewhere. You are fasting what? Unto God. Let that be your focus every day you wake up these 63 days. That I, God, I want to be more like you. I want to separate myself from the noise. I want to be separated what? Towards you. Towards you. Number two. We have decided there are different types of fasting. Okay. There's a corporate fast and there are individual fast. Individual fast, there are total fast. Or, or, or partial fast, there is the Daniel fast. But for this one, we have decided that you can either go the dry, 30 days dry, if you want to, amen, or when we're talking about you take, you take uh, water. Or you will go the, the, the 23 days normal route. Okay. I go the normal route, I'm a normal human being. <laughs> you people you can go your 30 days dry. So, what then happens is we are going to break this fasting into three segments. The first segment will be the first 21 days. The first 21 days, we're just going to thank God. 
So please, if you are leading prayers, it's just thanksgiving, nothing else. Don't come and ask for anything. No. Just nothing. Else. Just don't. No. I know you are in a hurry to ask. Don't just, just. The second 21 days, nothing again is just asking for mercy. Mercy. Then the last 21 days will be when we will now start making petitions and demands. Okay? So that's how we're going to go. First 21 days, just thanking God. Second 21 days, just asking for mercy. And then the last um, 21 days will be when we make demands. When we make demands. Please, once again, as we embark on this, we are starting tomorrow. So what I want to do, go home today. Be specific. Sit down and write things you want God to do. It will help you to channel your prayers. It will help you to be focused. Okay. It will not just say, okay, we're doing, we're doing. Just sit down and say, this year, these are the things. If you've written it already, bring those things and put, put it in view. These are the things you are believing God. So as you are thanking God, you are thanking God for those things. As you are asking God for mercy, you are asking God for mercy upon those things. As you are, you know, as we are making petitions, we're not going to pray over those things. So you are focused. You're just focused. You're just not doing that. It is um, church saying so. No, you are focused. So please be specific about what you are fasting for. And um, you also, I want to also know that, please, I've said it here before. We fast wisely, okay? Um, fasting will not kill you. But at the same point in time, you break into fasting gradually, amen? If you've never fasted before, don't just carry yourself and just one. You can take it to 3 o'clock, okay? You can take it, you know, just you can stretch it a bit. Um, and then, please, if you have a medical condition that you should not fast, please, except you have a divine revelation, no? just follow your doctor's advice. Amen? But if you have a divine revelation between you and God, not from pastor to you, between you and God, then hold on to that. Because God that is speaking to you, what? Will see you through it. Amen? So, please, and if you are pregnant, Please, let the baby eat food. Amen? <laughs> let the baby. That one is not part of the fasting. So, for certain conditions, you are exempted from fasting. But please also, like I said, just be wise enough to break it in gradually. We'll send some of these things to us um, in our WhatsApp um, chat. And then finally... When you break at the end of the day, don't break like somebody that. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Is that how you break? Don't break like someone that has kept breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and, and you want to eat everything at once. Don't, don't. Just break lightly. Amen? Break lightly. The initial days will be the ones that are most rigorous. As you pass the first couple of days, it's going to be a lot better in the name of the Lord Jesus. Can we be upside on our feet? Just one prayer. Say, Father, grant me grace. Grant me grace, O God, as we embark on this corporate 63 days prayer and fasting. Grant me grace. Grant me grace. Grant me grace. Grant me grace. In the name of the Lord Jesus, grant me grace. Grace to wait upon you. Grace to fast. In the name of the Lord Jesus, grant me grace, O God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, grant us grace as a people. Grant us grace, O God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Grant us grace, grant us grace in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, O oh God, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. And amen.